I cleaned her up and I dressed her for dinner. Aww. I met Aaron in an Irish pub north of Atlanta in Roswell, Georgia. At the time, he was stationed in Mannheim, Germany, and I was just living and working there. He asked the bartender if he knew who I was. The bartender called me over, and Aaron said hello. We wrote back and forth for the next six months. We talked every day if we could. So he was constantly in my life, even if he wasn't there. I uh, used to disarm bombs for a living until one got me. I had been through two different deployments to Iraq. I was in the middle of six months of Afghanistan. I had been in, in and out of multiple hostages. Aaron and I were only married a year when he left for Afghanistan, so we did not plan for a child before he left, but he sustained a genital injury that has greatly threatened his fertility. Aaron lost one and one third of his testicles, which inhibits his testosterone production to the point that he will only be on testosterone replacement for the rest of his life. The drawback to the testosterone replacement therapy is that it will eventually sterilize him. He's got a knee. It feels smooth. You feel like a snake. Yeah. <laughs> Austria. 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 That's in Austria. Europe. Yeah. You think your legs that heavy? Yeah. Right now, he is off his testosterone replacement so that he can take a fertility medication. Sperm meds. Yeah. Because we know we only have a limited amount of time to try and get pregnant. Some water. Security and Assistance Force members. Three were United States Forces Afghanistan members. Three Afghan National Security Forces members and one Afghan interpreter were also killed. I'm Aaron Jimmy Moreland reporting from Kandahar Airfield, Afghanistan. Take your time. Slow down. Slow down. I'm so used to... I know. He had been called to an incident to investigate a possible IED, improvised explosive device. The initial device was a hoax. It's a fake device. And that usually means there are real ones, multiple ones around it. Two men came to my door, sat me down, and all they really told me was that Aaron had been hurt. Mm -hmm. 
and I asked them if they would help me tell his family. Aaron's parents, Jack and Brenda and I, flew to Germany on the same day, but on different flights. It was about an hour ride from the airport to Landstone Regional Medical Center. We met with the doctors, and then we were taken back to his ICU bay to see him. He opened his eyes when they turned the sedation down to let him know we were there. And he looked scared to death. And I think he thought that somehow we were all in Afghanistan with him. And I thought I was gonna be sick. I knew I wasn't gonna cry, but I just thought I was gonna be physically ill and I wasn't, I just looked at him. Aaron didn't even take up the whole bed. The medical staff stored things at the bottom where his legs weren't. That's how you know. There's room at the bottom of a bed for medical equipment, charts, books, blankets. There's just space where there shouldn't be. I've never seen somebody like that. And I can't really explain what it felt like to see your husband like that. Hey, baby. I slept in Aaron's room almost every night of the two months he was inpatient, with the exception of ICU. And for the last month, I stayed there straight. Hello, everybody. This is Aaron from my uh, hospital bed in Bethesda. I want to let everybody know that all your cards, your prayers, your love, your best wishes are well received. I'm still doing surgeries like every other day or every other three days. The only thing I'm doing is I'm just taking it one day at a time. That's all I can do, just take it one day at a time. The hospital is huge and it's a big maze and you walk around for the first three weeks not sure where you are. You might learn the long way to get somewhere, but not the short way, but since the long way is the way that you know, you don't take a different way. You have such a routine there that you get to know everyone very well. You learn their names. You ask them if they have families, what kind of pets they have. I spend so much time there that I can tell people where they are in the hospital by what color the floor is and what parking deck they came in on. I can really use a pop. Father, we just give you thanks for the joy of coming together as family and friends. And we just ask your blessings upon this food and this time together. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Who's your favorite uncle? <laughs> Who's your favorite aunt? What about Aunt Gabby and Uncle Ron? <laughs> They're your favorite Great. older aunt and uncle. Right. How was your dance recital? Good. Did you like wearing makeup? Yes. Did you like dancing? Yes. Hi. Here's some more sparkle. I signed all the medical consent forms up until the very end. Erin was either too drugged up or physically could not sign. You like it? Yeah. I need some lipstick too. I probably signed 100 forms and sometimes I wouldn't sign them until he was on the way to the OR. And they came to me and told me the best course of action would be to amputate two of his fingers on his left hand down to the knuckle. And I consented to that. I signed the form. And that particular surgery, Aaron came back all bandaged up. And he never said anything before. But he looks at me and he says, there are nubbies where my fingers used to be. My fingers are gone. 
I was just devastated. And just talk. All one. I can't wait to have a child. I think you're probably big. But, you know, and it's one of those things I joke about not having to wait with the hands and everything the way they are for to have to take care of them and stuff like that. Or having to feed them or wake up with them and stuff like that. But at the same time, I wouldn't be able to hold him, love him, just touch him, talk to him, and tell him he's my son and I'm his father. And tell him how much I love him. <laughs> and I'm going to take care of him. I'm going to be there for him. No matter what. I'm just holding him in my arms. It's one day at a time. One day at a time. As long as you give your nurse the right kind of wink or nudge, for the most part, they understand you have a marriage to take care of. And when you've gone so long without intimacy and you've seen your spouse in a way they haven't been since they were babies, you know, it's really important to focus on that sexual intimacy. Yeah, yeah, mother. I like that. Do you really? Yeah. It looks like it does have like a harness thing that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you could use to suspend yourself. So, and those little like stirrups and stuff are padded as well. I won't be needing those. <laughs> <laughs> it was six o'clock one morning and I was so worried I was gonna hurt his nubs. He, they were still so swollen and so bandaged up. And we did it again like later that morning about 10 o'clock. With all the hustle and bustle of the 10 o'clock hospital going on, breakfast is getting picked up, you know, but he was supposed to be getting out that week and we just wanted to get a good head start and help urology out, you know, they needed to know if it worked. <laughs> It's okay, baby. It's okay. <laughs> hey, hey. How you doing, Mama? I think everybody's been through something where they know something terrible is about to happen or something awful has happened and you're about to find out what it is. Your throat and your heart sink to your stomach. All you feel on the inside is how hollow your chest is and how fast your heart is beating. That first moment I saw him, the only thing I could think is what do we do now? You have to figure out what to do next get to the next moment because there is a next moment there is a next part and that's all you can get through that's it <laughs> 